the E11, I believe. I'm cutting that out if that's wrong. Good day, mga tol. This is Tall Fry, and today we'll be taking a look at the Star Wars Black Series Return of the Jedi Deluxe Boba Fett figure. Now, this is the Black Series figure I've been the most hyped for this year, ever since they revealed those digital renders. I thought, yeah, we're finally gonna get a cheaper version of this suit in figure form. No more need for the Mafex. <laughs> so, is this a suitable boba for your shelf? Let's find out. So Boba comes with this nice window box packaging that shows us everything that he comes with in this set. We have a nice uh, black and green motif here which I'm really liking, especially the parts that contrast. Like the smooth embossed green on the matte black. We have a nice artwork of Boba Fett over here in his Return of the Jedi outfit. We have a nice close-up of him there and a read-up. Side, bottom, top. So without further ado, let's get this guy out of the packaging. So here's the figure out of the packaging and for the most part I gotta say it's pretty good you know the sculpt the details but there are a couple of things that make it kind of weird and if they changed those things they would have made this figure way way better. So let's take a look at it. This is my favorite design of all time for Boba Fett because of that uh, red gauntlet. I love that. I love the mix of colors and they were able to implement it quite well here in figure form. I love the mix of colors that they have with the greens, the, the whites, yellows, reds. Another thing that I love so much is the battle damage all around this figure. Yes, as you can see, you have that little metallic silver paint there at the back with a bunch of damage right there scattered all around for some reason it doesn't have it on the top part of his dome though so that's kind of weird i love all the little logos and details that they were able to add here those uh, stripes around the helmet see even more of the battle damage there on this chest piece and then also on the gauntlets and the shoulder pads yeah, even those little logos, that, I have no idea what that means. He also has this belt piece which isn't glued in. You can move it around and shift it for uh, articulation purposes, I suppose. And it's also connected to these pouches. You have this little uh, movable cape. It's no longer cloth though, like with the Empire Strikes Back version. It does look cool how it's tattered and has holes in it, like it's been through some stuff. Though, if you really wanted to, you could replace that with a custom cloth cape. These are the braids, the Wookiee braids, I'm sure. This, I'm not sure. It's just some red piece, but it adds a little more flavor to the entire getup. He has uh, these pouches on the legs, these yellow knee pads, and then uh, he has these tools on the shins, and then feet, pretty good. And then he has peg holes at the bottom of his feet. One of the things that I find weird with this is that there seems to be some kind of inaccuracies when it comes to the colors. Because as you can see here, I'm not sure if my lighting can pick it up as well. This shade of green on the helmet is different from the shade of green on the armor. I remember this is the right shade of green. I don't remember this being like super dark and stuff. I, I think this one was more accurate, though I'm not sure. I will have to check that out. Also, out of the packaging, this is a very common issue for everyone that picked up this figure, but uh, the helmet was quite squished. It will be super squished in the plastic packaging. Pretty easy fix. You can just uh, hair dry it or dip in hot water and then form it but just by pressing like that. In my case, I didn't even have to do any of those. I just had to press it here to, to widen the sides. My uh, biggest issue with this figure is that while he has the battle damage and the torn cape and all that, his white parts... What? White? His... Uh, yeah, this khaki no. no this isn't khaki whatever color you call this grayish uh it lacks a significant amount of wash it looks way too clean in comparison to the rest of his outfit which has like battle damage and stuff it should be like dirtier and grimier it looks clean and not in the right way <laughs> uh, i've seen a bunch of other people add their own custom uh, black wash to the figure and uh, do whatever repaints they want to make it look more accurate but yeah overall it's still a pretty good sculpt. Thanks, bitch. Also taking a look at his jetpack here, I have to say that I like it. I, I love the, especially on this part, this tiny rocket here. The mix of gun, metal, gray, and silver that they used on it. Very cool. Here, I love the battle damage that they did on the blue parts of the jetpack, but there is a severe lack of it on all the other colored parts though. This yellow seems a little too bright compared to some reference pictures I searched online. And yeah, maybe that could use a little more repainting, maybe add a wash over it to look more of that uh, worn down damaged Boba Fett that we know and love from the Return of the Jedi. Agreed. For articulation, first things first, beep. 
boop. Yes, yeah, so you can finally move down that visor, which is awesome. I kind of wanted that function in the Empire Strikes Back version, but alas, we didn't get it. Here, however, we finally do, so we can recreate him firing that rocket off his jetpack. So he can look down a bunch, yes, up, uh, not really, unfortunately, which sad to say, because he has a jetpack, he should be able to look up for flying poses. You can tilt his head and meh amount, and you can also look all around. It's pretty good. Uh, arms can go up to that much. Uh, the shoulder pad will kind of get in the way. Can't move the arm all around without the shoulder pad getting in the way. Then we have several articulation points here in the forearm elbow area. So you have one here and one hinge. These are single jointed unfortunately but it can reach a bend slightly more than 90. And you have another swivel here which is different from this one. And then uh, you have the swivel here and then hinge up and down for this hand. On this hand, it's uh, different. It's left to right. For torso articulation, you can crunch that much, which ain't that a lot. And then go back that much, which is also not a lot. Swivel, uh, tilt, the torso area, the armor. It feels like it's a rubber overlay or something it will kind of get in the way because it's not an ab crunch then uh, you can kick up this much not up to 90 kick back that much which is also not a lot side single jointed again single jointed knees but a little more than 90 so at least there's that and then uh hinge up and down and then ankle rocker and here are what makes the deluxe boba fett figure shine and actually makes it worth the purchase in my opinion are all these accessories of course <laughs> my favorite so let's go through them uh, one by one starting with the crappiest of them all this uh, grappling hook thing it's not really that impressive it's just a string in the renders it looked like it would be like a solid piece maybe uh, not even a, a bendable wire just a straight one uh, so that it could look like it's shooting out of his forearm but uh no guess not they just made it a regular good old-fashioned string and they put that a silver bit at the end so at least there's that but this this stands out like a sore thumb when it's attached to the figure okay you just clamp it around his right wrist like that <laughs> that's pretty much it that's all they intended to do even the length of this is pretty disappointing that's what she said <laughs> it's not even enough to wrap around a figure like twice it's like a little more than once and then that's it and then uh, we have this this is the sliced up uh gun it's the sliced up gun since his gun got sliced up by Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi on Jabba's barge. That's that's cool, I guess. The yellow-green paint kind of throws... I mean, it still looks like it got cut in half, like it's superheated, right? Some orange would have been nice to throw in there to, make, to sell the effect. But uh, it's okay. I'm probably also not gonna pose him with this. This is his normal. So that's good. It's uh, different from how it looked in the Empire Strikes Back version. This one looks all rusted, dirty, damaged which uh, goes with the whole motif of the Return of the Jedi suit. By the way, I already showed the jetpack, right? It, it counts as an accessory, but I threw him on Boba because he looks weird without it. Can remove the rocket for some uh, poses like that. And then to go with the jetpack, you have these. These are the jetpack flame effects of the gradient from light yellow, orange to orange to red. Then you can just very easily plug them into these slots. And yeah, it looks like the jetpack is taking off. You just need to twist them around to point them in the direction that they're going to. And then you can also change the direction, those those uh, swivel points. And last but not least is this flame streak effect, which I think is freaking awesome. Like, look at that. The, the way it has a gradient from yellow to orange to orange red. And then the different patterns and details. It's sculpted details, by the way. So... It has uh, different depths and textures and stuff. Well, it's smooth all around, but you get what I mean. It has holes even in there. To really sell the effect that it's like a flame, an actual flame. It's random. It's not like just one solid piece. So that looks quite beautiful. And it plugs in very nicely to the figure itself. Plug the shape in properly. Might need to bend this uh, wrist out of the way. Right there, just like that. And that looks freaking beautiful. He it really looks like he's shooting the flame out from the gauntlet and that that is an awesome looking effect one of the many weapons that boba fett or any mandalorian has on them so this is really what sold me on the the whole pack all of these are cool and stuff but this this is really the awesome cherry on top that really 
made me want to get it, aside from the suit being an awesome design and all. And for size comparisons, here's Boba next to the only other black series I have in my collection, the Phantom Menace Darth Maul from the Archive Wave. And yeah, I always imagined Darth Maul to be a shorter dude, so this size and scaling is about right for me. Though then again, his legs are pretty wide apart. You can't actually bring them closer together. They're designed like that. And here he is next to a couple of other Star Wars figures. You have the SH Figure Arts Anakin Skywalker and Darth Maul. And last but not least, here he is next to a couple of Mandalorians. The Mafex Mandalorian and the Bandai Model Kit Mandalorian. So overall, I'd have to say this figure is pretty good. I do have plans of having some parts repainted like the jetpack and the white parts of the suit, but everything else is good with me. Articulation isn't the best, but this is a bounty hunter. His weapons do the talking. And while not all his accessories are that exciting, the best ones are the important ones for a display. I can confidently say that this can be my shelf Boba. No more need for the Mafex one. Now I'm just praying that Boba doesn't undergo too many design changes throughout his new show, so that I don't need to get more, and more, and more, and more. So what do you all think? Is this figure worth the 1,700 pesos? Which is how much I got it for, by the way. And is this your favorite design for the character? Let me know in the comments down below, and like and subscribe while you're at it. Check out my other reviews on the screen right now, share this with your friends, and be good people, I guess.